talking a lot. But that wasn't always the case. He tells us how he went from being a short-tempered kid who was always getting in trouble to the even-keeled, happy-go-lucky guy he is today. Calling in now, Wade Jones the third, my Instagram friend. What's up? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? It's going good. I'm doing well. We are so excited to see you on September 5th, the very first pay-per-view that Best in Boxing and Global Sports Streaming is putting together. How are you feeling about it? I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a great card, a great event. I'm uh, coming to put on a show. Now, I know that you have a, a lot of fans. And actually, like I said, I mentioned earlier that I'm your Instagram friend. You posted a video <laughs> after that June 26th fight just saying thank you to everybody. You seem to get a little emotional, just a little tiny bit, just yeah. you know, your fans and everything. What did that um, win mean to you? And what does it mean to you to have the support of fans and Best in Boxing? Um, it means a lot to me. You know, um, when I first started all this, uh, it was just me believing in me and then trying to fight, figure out how to get to the gym and figure out how to make it happen. So now that um, I've been grinding and uh, I've been putting in all the work over the years and now I got all this support behind me, you know, so it's, it's just amazing. It's, just, it's a great feeling. You know, I got a lot of support, um, some diehard fans. I don't know how many fans exactly that I have because it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of them that I don't even know. Right. But I, I, I just hear, it. yeah, I just hear it in the grapevine. Um, my my uh, coach goes to get a haircut, and he's and the dude had his hair. He's just like, oh, it's like, oh, you're his coach, and he's like hey, excited and stuff like that. So it's oh, just like fantastic. the stories that I hear from it, uh, and then from what I see, it's it's cool getting recognized every once in a while. You know, it's pretty cool. It's just a uh, very humbling and very exciting feeling. So I just have to show my gratitude to everybody. You know. Yeah, and you have a lot of support. I actually heard a rumor that back in March, before the lockdown, you sold 10,000 tickets to a fight sold, in Stockton? Uh, I sold more than that, actually. Um, I passed, the, my goal was 10,000. And then um, I, I think I sold almost 12,000. I think it was like 11,000 something. And wow. uh, we had like a week left. We had like a week left. So um, that was dope. I, I, you know, like, you know, everybody lags last minute. So I was thinking I was probably going to get at least 12, you know, um, it's still cool, man. I, I can't wait so we can bring it back home. You know, maybe it's going to yeah. be, be bigger. If it's the same, you know, I don't, I don't care. I just can't wait to fight in front of the home team. I mean, at 4-0, you're fairly new to the game still. So where does that fan base come from? Uh, man, it's just word of mouth. It's just like, because I've been, like I said, I've been putting, it was just me. It was just me and uh, it was just me believing in me. And then it was me, my coach believing in us, the squad believing in us. So was, uh, I've been going gym to gym, getting my respect, you know, Staying humble, just, you know, I don't post stuff online. Um, I'm a very uh, humble guy, cool guy. I, I don't have a short temper anymore. So um, i just very thankful. So I always show love to everybody, everywhere I go, any anytime. A lot of people don't know I box. I, I don't even mention it unless it's, like, for um, a, a monetary opportunity or something like that. I won't even mention it when I'm out. I let other people say it, and then, then I'll confirm it and stuff like that. So uh, I think that's what it is, just all the love I've shown, all the respect I got in the gym. Everyone just came together and was just like – supporting me you know they see, and then you know they seen my last couple fights so they're excited to see it live and stuff like that so i think that's what it was now you mentioned that you don't have a short temper anymore i know that yeah. um, <laughs> you got into boxing because you got into a little trouble first had to go to florida with your dad and yes, kind of yes, got man. into it there so has the sport helped you even though now you fight professionally has this yeah. sport helped you to kind of control that emotion or the explosiveness or anger or whatever it was it that um, fueled a short temper before uh it's it's a combination of a lot of things but the sport definitely uh it's a combination to the people i have in my ear now the role models that i have now um mm -hmm. the goals that i have now because back then i didn't have any goals i didn't i didn't want to be anything you know I, I was like at 12 years old i thought i was gonna die at like 18 so it's like that's wow. just where my mindset was at um so me getting into boxing i i, I developed goals I met my coach. He's been getting all the animosity off me and the big the chip that I had on my shoulder before. He's been breaking it down. We've just been growing together, you know. So that's why um, I can control my my temper a lot more. A lot of stuff rolls off my back. I don't even think of anything because I'm just so happy. You know, I'm so happy with how life's going for me. And uh, the future, I feel like my future is extremely bright. I just got to stay alive, stay focused, stay out of trouble, you know. So um, 
That's and all I'm worried about. It's interesting that you thought you might die at 18, and now I hear interviews with you, and you're, you say you want to die a legend. That's yeah. a big <laughs> change in mindset. Yeah. So congratulations on that. What would you say yeah. to maybe some younger kids or some aspiring fighters that are kind of maybe feeling some of that angst that, that you felt or, or hopelessness even that you might have felt as a kid? Um, I tell them just if it's boxing that they want to do, I tell them just stay in the gym. Let all that, all that, uh, let that, let all that out in the ring, uh, in the on the bag, on the mitts. Let that fuel you to work hard. You know, uh, whatever's hurting you, just when you feel that hurt, just go out and go run, go work out, exercise, let's get released to the body, and just stay, stay out the way. Um, that's that's the best thing I can tell them. Just stay out the way and invest into yourself. You know, um, that's what I do. I got anything that I make. Um, that I can from boxing, especially anything I make from boxing, I invest it right back into boxing. Anything I make um, with with my job, I put it into boxing. So all the money that I, I that I can that I, that I that's put into me, that's invested into me, or that I make, I invest it into myself. You know, so I, I tell them, <laughs> I, I tell them, uh, I tell them invest into the into their boxing career if that's what they really want to do. And uh, by also investing into your boxing career, that means you gotta keep yourself healthy. You know, don't don't do drugs, don't drink. Um, work extremely hard and you'll do fine, you know, and if they don't believe in you now, they will later. I'm like living proof. <laughs> yeah, you're doing more than fine. That's for sure. Now we mentioned the support of a large fan base regionally. Do you think that those fans will follow you behind the paywall when we have this pay-per-view, you know, do you think that they're going to keep watching and, and what do you think about expanding your fan base to global now that you are being streamed on pay-per-view? Um, I think they're going to keep watching because I, I tell them where they can watch it. And they're like, oh, yeah, I tell them how much it is. They're like, oh, yeah, we watch it. And we tune it in. They send the link, post the link. So, you know, that's all I gotta do is just do my part and um, making sure that they have access to it and they'll tune in. You know, it's, uh, pay-per-view isn't that much. It's nine ninety nine. dollars 99 So, uh, so you know, that's way cheaper in. than a ticket at the gate there, too. So yes, but they, how does yeah. it affect you being such a, char- a charismatic guy? not having the audience because i know that was the case in june 26th in tijuana you didn't have the audience there what are you learning from that experience that you're taking into the september 5th fight um i honestly like i didn't really only the main difference between not having the audience is which was what i thought it would be is when they announce your name no one's cheering for you really it's no one <laughs> that's, your, that's like the uh, the only difference when they announce that you want to know that you don't hear a bunch of screaming yeah. and if you hit them with a good shot you don't hear a bunch of screaming besides that it's, it's regular. It's not really like um, a big deal to me because I'm charismatic um, at times, but in my regular life, I'm extremely serious. I'm real focused. And then in, in the gym, um, if I'm with my team and we're playing around at, after, then I'm then I then I joke around. But most of the time, I'm very serious and very business minded. So when it comes time to fight, that's exactly the side that comes out. Is I'm ready to get it. So ready the, to get the to crowd, work, that's for sure. <laughs> and <laughs> you certainly the, had the, to work on June 26th. I mean, Hector Hernandez was not an easy fight. Yeah. You landed some really good shots right on his chin. Dude just kept coming at you. It's like he wouldn't drop. What do yeah. you feel about that fight? I'm thankful for that fight, man. I learned a lot from that fight. Um, that's what that's what takes us. It's going to help build me as a fighter. You know, these tough fights. Uh, my first couple of fights, I got I got those guys out of there immediately. So um, it wasn't too much learning. It was just a, it was a good confidence boost, you know, and um, my last couple of fights, I went the distance with some real tough dudes. I wanted to win. They kept coming, kept pushing, kept fighting. The fight before last, I knocked the dude down. I didn't think he was going to get up when I landed that, but he got up. Uh, and I put a, He took a beating after that, but um, he took it and took it. And then the next guy, he just kept coming. Now I stopped trying to, trying to beat me. I had to dig deep, I had to grind. And um, so I just know that's just elevating me as a fighter. It's the early stages of my career. Um, all that matters at this stage of my career is that I win. So as long as I get the win and don't get hurt, then that's all that matters to me. Well, you mentioned that your first couple of fights, I think they were first nine, first round knockouts, right? So yes, those ended quickly. You had mentioned that you wanted to get some more rounds in. So now that your last two fights have really gone the distance, yeah. do you still want that? Like, how do you feel now? <laughs> um, I'm going I, 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 I'm to let it come. You know, I'm going to let, uh, as God's playing, you know, uh, let the universe, you know, do what it's going to do. But I, I'm always... I always, uh, you know, like they say, you don't get paid for overtime. So I'm always going to be ecstatic if I can get them out of there early. Uh, if the opportunity presents itself, I'm going to get them out of there. If not, then uh, I'm ready for for whatever. Four rounds. When I go six, I'm ready for. I'm going to be ready for six. So it's, it's, it is what it is. I, I don't mind. But you know, of course, the fans want to see knockouts. So I want to. I want to do that too. <laughs> 
But the fans want to see great fights. And I think that you also showed that you've got a strong chin and your endurance was, was fantastic because you needed it against Hernandez on June 26th. Now, I think that seeing those different kinds of fighters and having those different kinds of fights this early in your career is an advantage. So how do you feel um, when you face other fighters with different styles? I agree. I think it's an, uh, I think it's an advantage because um, uh, later on, it, it's all going to play a part. Your opposition, your sparring, all that's going to show uh, once you start going up to the top level and everything's uh, – Competition starts getting uh, getting st- tougher. You're gonna see who's gonna fold. You know, I'm in these tough fights early in my career, and you know, I'm um, these tough tests, and I'm passing them. So, um, not, you don't see uh, you don't see me looking like I'm ready to quit. Like my eyes big wide. Like I don't want to do this. Nah, this is, I'm I'm built for this, and I'm gonna keep showing that. <laughs> and I know that you're the type of guy you said you've never turned down a fight I feel like you're the type of guy that's like whatever I'll fight anybody but you've also said that it doesn't matter who you're fighting you're always nervous not because you're scared of the opponent or afraid of losing but you said you're always nervous because you want to do your best and you want to yeah. look good so yeah. how does that help with your training and how does that help with your I guess energy and the, the adrenaline when you have stepping into the ring so it's weird it's, uh, it's weird because um I'm not nervous the day the fight's there. And like when it's time to fight, I'm not nervous at all. I'm like the least nervous. Everyone else is nervous and I'm just chilling. But before that, uh, in training, um, I use it as fuel. Like, you know, the, the little anxious, nervous, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to let anybody do anything to me. So if they're going to, if they're going to, if they're out there to do something to me, they got to earn it. They don't have to really do it. So I'm not letting anybody do nothing to me. So um, that's how I train. You know, I train hard uh, as hard as I can. I put, put the work in and, um, and when it comes fight time, I'm relaxed because I already know I put the work in. I did everything I possibly could. And then uh, I just leave it up to leave it up to the, the man upstairs. Yeah. And, and you train very hard. How has it been different through this COVID roller coaster? Things were shut down in March. You talked about selling all those tickets. You know, that mm-hmm. that boxing show was shut down. Um, and then now it's like, well, maybe it's actually even better because now streaming has become so important in mm-hmm. your audience is worldwide. So how mm-hmm. has that roller coaster been for you since March and how has it affected your training? Uh, so this time around, um, uh, I was, I was uh, aware. So I just got right back to the gym. So life has been kind of back to normal, uh, almost, you know, as normal as it can be, you know, because uh, I, I just work, train. That's how it was before. So um, that's why I'm back to that. So uh, it's, it's cool. I, I feel like I adjusted to it. Um, yeah, that's all I, can say. I feel like I adjusted to it. I, I'm ready for it now. I'm even more. I'm going to be more prepared than I was the last time. So. What do you think about the sport itself being able to pivot and not only survive these restrictions and kind of this new reality we all live in, but thrive? I think combat sports in general have yeah. really been the only sport to keep moving forward and yeah. innovate, like we are here at Global Sports Streaming. So, how do you feel about the sport in general being able to pivot? Uh, I love it. You know, I, I love the sport. And um, people always, like, been trying to say boxing is dying for years, but it's it's not, and it won't. It's one of the uh, the oldest sports uh, around, you know. And, you know, uh, it's even older than that because it was something else. You know, the gladiator fighting can relate that back to boxing. So it's it's been around forever. People have been entertained by people going at it for, since the beginning of time, and I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. So I'm glad that uh, the sport has uh, adjusted like the fighters have to in the sport. So uh, I'm excited. I don't, I don't think we're slowing down anytime soon. I think it's just going to, stock's going to rise with boxing. I don't think you are slowing down anytime soon. Is there anything else boxing fans need to know about Wade Jones the third? Uh, follow me on Instagram, Wade Jones the third, or it's Wade Jones, I T S W A D E J O N E S. And um, stay away from my Twitter. you got it good luck to you again i think you're the second fight on the card for september 5th pay-per-view on uh, global sports streaming and best in boxing wayne jones wade jones the third let me get it right here is going to be taking on who are you taking on i just forgot i don't know you don't even know i don't know who's he fighting armando (laughs) <laughs> this is so funny. I was so focused on doing your interview and I totally forgot who you're fighting right now. No, uh, I just got that. Oh, we just got your opponent. Okay. So maybe this will be breaking news to you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I don't think knows. Yeah. So I said breaking news for you. He's on his phone frivolously right now trying to get your opponent. 
This was not planned because obviously, but I was like, oh wait, who's he fighting? I don't even know. Francisco yeah. Parra. Francisco Parra. P A R R A. Francisco, Francisco Parra. So okay. Google him, watch some videos, and get ready for some. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, let's get it. From Tijuana. So that's what Armando's yelling at me over there. So we will be ready for you. We'll be pulling for you, and good luck to you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Have a great day. Be sure to watch Best in Boxing's pay-per-view event on September 5th. It's one of the best cards in the entire sport, for real. I'm Courtney Perna. I'll be broadcasting from Las Vegas for the prelim bout starting at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And the fighters, they'll be live from the fight capital of Mexico, Tijuana. See you then.